Good afternoon, welcome back to the 120th. Uh, I have something quite special for you this afternoon. Um, it is a Krauss roulette uh, from somewhere between 1926 and 1931. So it is at least 90 years old, potentially as, as many as 96 years old. And it really is in quite striking condition. It's rather lovely uh, snakeskin exterior. Uh, and this has come to me quite by chance, actually. So I bought a, a, a box of cameras at auction uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, in that box, the, the headline was a Yashica A, um, which will be appearing on the channel at some point. Um, and it said Yashica A plus various others. And in there was also uh, a Minolta CDS3, uh, which is a very nice camera. And this, uh, as uh, amongst other things, there was a lot of junk in there as well, but this was sort of hidden underneath everything else at the back. It really is in good nick. It's a 127 camera, it takes 127 film, folds out onto rails, the lens on it, is it's pretty good. It says roller and a stigmat, eight centimeter, so eighty mil, uh, f four point five. Okay, so let's uh, let's get out the old uh, the old tool. And no, I don't mean me. Uh, the my phone based shutter speed tester. There it is. Start the record. Fire. And we're looking for a fiftieth of a second. So it's a little slow. Is that definitely on the 50th that I set it? I did. Let's change it to a 100th and let's start that going. Fire. No, oh, that's almost, that's pretty close actually for a hundredth of a second. How about that? I'm not much of a camera collector. So despite the, the, the beauty of this particular camera, what I will probably do is take it out for a spin, take some photos with it, enjoy it. Uh, and then find somebody who, who will, uh, a collector who, who can add this to their collection who will really enjoy it. Let's um, put a film in it. So there aren't that many 127 films available these days, but I have a roll of Rarapan 400. So we'll uh, load this up. A little teeny tiny film. Very similar to a 120 film, but smaller. So we are going to load this. And it's gonna be just gonna face down on this side. We'll pop it in top first. Oh. Well. It's not a 127 camera. This must be one of the earlier versions, which is a 129. Which is actually a little bit more exciting. Um, however, I do not know if you can get 129 film anywhere. Uh, and that's definitely 127. And that don't fit. And that is not the same as that, is it? Well, shit. Okay. Time to go and find out if I can buy 129 film anywhere. in a bit. Right then, we're out in the workshop. Um, I've done a lot more research. I've uh, read almost everything there is to read about 129, 127, all the rest of it. And it turns out there might be a workaround. And that is what I'm going to investigate now. This is a 129 spool. And you can see the difference in the size. Let's measure it. Five centimeters on the 127, five and a half on the 129. So it's basically half a centimeter. Um, now, the, the, the thinking is that, uh, and this is what I found earlier when I tried to put this in, is that you can see how short that is of the top. And obviously I'm gonna put it in this side where the, where the film goes, that's the gap that we need to fill. So in theory, if I were to put in literally a, a, a little tube on the bottom of that, then it should hold it in place sufficiently to at least let it turn and, and, and stay where it's supposed to be. So the other thing to note actually is this is the top end here. The centre pins at the top are different sizes. So it's not going to be that easy to use an empty 127 as your take-up spool. So I think best bet, I'm going to use the 129 take-up spool that came in the camera. Try and find something to, to, to prop up this 127, then run the 127 onto the 129. 
that's the plan. So, I need to find something to bridge that gap. And I had the idea that I'd look around the workshop, see what I could find that might do the job. And this is what I've come up with. A nut of nut and bolt fame. Let's just have a quick look at the width of that. I mean, that actually should be pretty good. So that is, um, it's just shy of half a centimetre thick. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So here we go. As close as I can here. And then I think what I'll do is, is put that on the bottom there and then just kind of push it into place. And I think that should... And but, you know, bear in mind that the, the case of the camera is going to be around it as well. So I think that'll probably work. Uh, that's going to spin just fine, isn't it? Right, so that's what we'll do. That is the plan. Let's take it out and see if it works. Right then, I've come out to the lovely um, Clifton Downs to take some photos with this Krauss Roulette. Worth bearing in mind, of course, that this, uh, this lens is from the 1930s. It will not be coated. The other thing which I'm gonna have to figure out is winding on. It's gonna be a little bit complicated because essentially these, the numbers on the back of the 127 paper um, are arranged for the ones in the middle will be arranged for either 4x4 or 4x65. I'm going to wind on two frames anyway. I'm going to wind I'll go from 1 to 3 and 3 to uh, 5, 7 and uh, see how it turns out because we really, I really don't know how wide these negatives are. So I'll probably only get about five shots out of this, but at least we'll get a chance to see how it all works. Right, and then we'll roll on to frame three. Let's cut the shutter again. Let's use this too. Okay, wind on two frames. Let's have a little wander across the field. See what we find over there. Let's try a slightly closer focus on this one. Cock shutter's cocked. Did that just fire? Ah, shit. And that's my last frame. Well, wow, that was a bit of a cock up. Basically, that trigger requires no pressure at all to fire. I might open that in the dark bag, you know. I might take the camera in and transfer direct from the, uh, the camera to the, the spool for developing. I'm just not convinced it's going to be wound super tight around that 129 spool, spool. So, what was that? Four shots, three of them intentional. Be interesting to see what comes back. Well, how about that then? So, that was the Krauss Roulette. It's possible it's a Krauss Roulette Luxus. Um, that seems to have been a model, and I, I think that seems to have coincided with the snakeskin finish. The fix worked, so going from 127 with the uh, washer, rolling from the 127 onto the 129 take-up spool definitely works. The slightly complicated um, thing about using the 127 uh, in a 129 camera is not knowing um, how to wind it on. Um, and this, I thought I'd just show you this. So you can see here, I was being over cautious and I was allowing, you know, much bigger space between the negatives. But essentially what we've, um, what I've done is got huge gaps into the negatives. So I only actually got four shots to that roll of film because I was um, being so cautious with, the, cautious with the frame. So that's definitely something I could get better at if I wanted to keep the camera. Um, but that's fine, and you know, the fact is I left the house not knowing whether I was gonna be able to take any photos with it. What's interesting is the, um, this I think is probably causing some issues. If you look, so if this is our film plane and this is the, um, the shutter here, there is a slight discrepancy 
in angle. Hard to see from there, but it, the, the, the shutter and the lens assembly is definitely sitting, not quite parallel with the film plane. Uh, if you look, we've got sort of a, a plane of focus on one side of the image and slightly soft focus on the other side of the image. Uh, I think that is affecting it a, a, a little. I mean, there's all sorts of workarounds. You could somehow bend it back, but after 95 years, you know, metal stresses and strains and becomes less and less able to uh, accommodate bending in such a fashion. Uh, so I might not dive at the opportunity to try and bend that back into place. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up for sale um, and see if I can find a, a, a buyer who wants to give it a good home. But I feel very privileged to have held it in my hand um, and had an opportunity to shoot with it. So an enjoyable outing and an enjoyable experience for me. I hope you enjoyed it too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, lots of stuff coming up. That SLX video is coming. I just need to find a shoot worthy of that camera. Um, shall I give you a little taste, actually? Shall we get a little taste? Here we go, Rolay SLX. This is what's coming soon. <laughs> just sounds awesome, doesn't it, eh? Lovely bright viewfinder. But let's look again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. I just think it's, 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 I don't know, it's just different. It's got slightly different, you know, offers slightly different things to many of the cameras that I have, uh, I currently own. Um, so, Roll 8 SLX, that's coming very soon. Uh, so looking forward to that one. Or as always, lots of other bits and bobs coming up on the channel, multi-exposures, that's, that's in the pipeline. But thanks for coming with me on my Kraus Roulette journey. Very, very impressed with this little camera. It's beautiful. All right, thanks a lot, bye.